evening. I am uh, Professor Dick Botteldoorn from Ghent University in Belgium, and I welcome you to this short introduction to urban sound. When looking at this picture, we can imagine that this environment, a park in Songdo, Korea, is rather quiet and can be looked at as a nice urban park. However, something is clearly missing here. What is missing is people. It's a very empty space, no life, part of the city, that is the people that live there, is clearly absent. Look at this other picture. We have more people, and this may be a more agreeable environment, both in visual and sound, for most people. On the other hand, number of people increases tremendously, like you see here. Again, the noise associated with this number of people will make this urban environment, this public space, less agreeable to relax and live and work in. So a very important first factor in urban sound and urban sound planning is people taking into account what the people want and what you want to do for the people. I will go into that in a moment. However, there is a second. Can you recognize where this picture is taken? Well, it's New York City. And you may recognize this because of particular elements like the cabs, the taxis, the McDonald's sign, and of course, the Vanderbilt Avenue sign on the left. So this tells us something about a city, places in the city, identity of the city, and also here, the sound may play a role. Another picture, a well-known fountain in Rome. Many people from that neighborhood or from Europe in general may know this fountain and identify it with a certain, maybe even a movie, and a certain place. The sound of this place, you can clearly imagine what is the matching sound that gives this place its particular identity. 